Um, okay, so we'll start, please, with uh, James Savundra. James. Hi, Pep. Hi. Pep, have you got any team news for us? Any players that definitely may start tomorrow? Any players that aren't in the in the match day squad? Everyone is fit, uh, and tomorrow going to decide. Does this mean that Sergio Aguero may potentially feature for the first time in a while? Uh, we're going to decide tomorrow. Maybe it's in the bench, or maybe tomorrow we're going to decide to make a training session. To, tomorrow we're going to see how is his reaction in in his uh, in his body, not in his knee. But uh, the important is the last two, three, four days he he will he. He was part of the group on the training, and uh, his reaction in, uh, in the niggles he had in the recent past was uh, disappeared. Okay, Simon Stone. Um, Pep, you obviously through. You've won the group. Um, given you've got the Manchester derby at the weekend, are you going to use the opportunity to play some younger players or play some players who don't really play that often? Uh, everyone's played a lot of minutes, so like I said before, we're going to the last days. We're going to play the game to win the game, and uh, I don't rotate the team. Uh, I try to put uh, all the players in the best condition for any game. Decide the best for for the team for the the team for this specific game. There is not one team for one competition, another one for another one. Uh, it's important the last three days, uh, except one or two players. Everybody was involved. And uh, and uh, be part of the team. That is oh. good because in this tire schedule, everybody has to be to be ready. But given given what you've already been through, presumably anybody who is even the remotest doubt um, wouldn't play. You wouldn't want to risk somebody for for the weekend. Uh, if someone make a lot a lot of minutes some uh, some player has a little bit uh, problems or niggles in some part of the of course we consider it this but what we have seen uh, today and everybody everybody was fit thank you thank you simon um next we'll go to ben ransom hi pep um just on that basis, Manchester United uh, have a tough game. They need to win at Leipzig, whereas you have the luxury of having already won your group. What advantage does that give you in terms of preparation ahead of the game this weekend? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They will be focused today. And when you are focused, when the next game is against a derby game, you continue to be in focus. I speak from my experience. And Fernandinho showed his influence, particularly in that game when he came back away in Porto. Just under a year ago, he signed a contract extension. Will you make any effort to keep him beyond the end of the season? Or do you enjoy the last few months you have with him and wish him well? I asked this question at uh, the previous press conference. All the time is the same. So I said, so he's part of the team. We are the light. Uh, he's back for a little injury he had, or no important injury he had. And he played awesome against against Oporto. Uh, uh, the previous this season, especially the previous season, we know now is struggling to play three games a week. So we got to handle the minutes, the efforts for him because it's not uh, like four, five, six, seven years ago. So, but his training so good. He's our captain. His influence in the team made is incredible. It's huge. And it's important what is back, and we will need it for tomorrow, for maybe Saturday, maybe the next game. So it's important to have him. Thank you, Ben. Um, next, we go to John Smith. Hi, Pat. Um, the the Under-21s have got their uh, Football League trophy game tonight. I uh, just wondered if that affected the, the young players that might be in your squad to face Marseille, and if there's any frustration at the scheduling of the games coming 24 hours before a Champions League game, you kind of have to decide whether they play tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, that's what it is. It's, the schedules are the schedules. So, a long time we talk about this. So, sometimes it's perfect for the second team, sometimes don't. So, but uh, yeah, four or five players will be will be in the squad tomorrow. And uh, but like I said, the first answer: we're going to play the game to to win the game. 
not thinking anything else to win the game. So it's the best way to prepare the future fixtures and uh, and because we had to respect Olympic Marseille and Olympiacos. So uh, and we're going to play the game to win the game. The players knows it. Is there anyone who's going to be playing tonight that won't be playing tomorrow night because they are in the game tonight? I didn't. Is there anyone who will be playing against? Yeah. If there's anyone playing tonight that you would have played tomorrow? Uh, and, uh, and tomorrow now we have a game and four or five players will be in the squad. So tomorrow I'm going to decide the, the start 11. But uh, four or five players the under 23 will be, will be with us tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, John, thank you. Um, Jack Gorn. Hiya, Pat. Um, Phil Phone played the last four Champions League games. And without wanting to guess your team tomorrow, I'm, I'm guessing he might play a f start a fifth game on the trot in Europe. What um, specific qualities does he does he give to you in European matches? No, he gives the quality in European matches in the Premier League, in the Carabao Cup, in the Cup. I just uh, he played against Madrid last season. He didn't play against Lyon, so he played this season. I don't see he play all the games in Champions League. I think the Champions League is completely different than the other ones. No, nope. every game we play, we try to to put the the team. I don't, I'm not a guy like play. All the season with just 11 players, so I don't believe in this. So I like to everybody be involved when they are ready, when they are incredible focus, and and they think what is the best for the team. They are going to play more or less. It depends on me, but they're going to play. I don't like to put uh, just 11, 12 players and have eight, nine players without playing games. So and, and after as much good you play, more chances you have to play more regularly. As simple as that. How have you um, how have you found his season so far? Because obviously there was, a, there was a little dip in kind of October. But do you think he's come back stronger afterwards? Uh, the team or which specific player? No, Phil. Sorry. Uh, Phil. No, no. But I think all the season will stop. So uh, since since the first game against Wolves, like play so good and score a goal and. Phil is a young, but he has an, an, an a specific energy and a specific quality. Of course, he has to to improve in the final decision in the in, in the in the um, in the 18-yard box. He has to be more patient in that moment. But it's part of the age, part of the you know the, his age and he, this energy. He's going to handle in the best way through the years. And uh, but as I said many times, we are delight about the half him or his performance. And is an incredibly important player for us. He knows it, and the team knows it. Thank you, Jack. Uh, next, we'll go to James Ducker. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Um, just um, given the crazy uh, schedule this this season and no preseason, how how much of a boost is it for you going into the derby on Saturday to be able to have options to maybe rest um, or take out one or two? No, a Saint James. I don't rest players. I don't rest players. I don't say these players don't play now because I've been thinking about uh, the other ones. So we play we play against Oporto, like we played to qualify first in the Champions League and I put in our players and they were awesome. We concede one clear chances and, and no more against Oporto. It's incredible success. So I said many times, the team are going to play tomorrow, they can play against United. And the guys that don't play tomorrow, maybe don't play against United or maybe play. I don't know. But tomorrow my focus is... I want to win this game tomorrow. It's not about uh, the election. And, and, and it's not because we have one more day or less day, because in the previous past, we had in the previous uh, Christmas time, in, always we had the team with rest less days. And it doesn't matter. So tomorrow we're going to play to win the game. And after Thursday, Friday, we're going to think about the game against United. Yeah. And just, just on Aguero, I know you've... Um spoken quite a bit about him in recent <laughs> uh, Sergio. Um, how reassuring is it for you as a manager to know that you, at some point you're going to have a player of that quality to come back? Because, you know, any any of the top set of forwards in the world, whether it's Kane, Lewandowski, all players like that, you know, players of that quality are missed. How, how, how reassuring for you is it to know that you've got a player of that calibre coming back? 
He'll be back when he will be able to train regularly during weeks, weeks, and weeks, and try to get minutes, minutes, minutes. And after he'll be back, with the quality is there. So with with Sergio, we know him quite well. He's uh, working incredible hard to come back, and this is the most important thing. So of course he need he needs a little bit more time for the injury for his physicality, but we are patient. So we would love to have him fit and ready, but if his knee responds well, the the, the demand that put himself on the pitch in the training session and the first minutes on, on, on the field. So he will be back for sure with the quality from Sergio. Nobody has doubts about them, but him. Thank you, James. Uh, next question from Paul Hurst. Hi, uh, just coming back to, to Phil again. He's only 20 years old, but he's played in several positions for you. you know, how, how kind of beneficial... Is that for you as a manager to know that you've got someone who can play, you know, centre midfield, wing, number 10, uh, or as a striker? Yeah, it's so good. Uh, now, in that moment, I see him, uh, people uh, play up front because for the dynamic, for the sense of goal, for uh, he helps us for the first pressure and after his backwards. And I'm pretty sure with the age and the years, uh, go through and become 25, 24, 25 years old, he will be able to play more in defensive midfielder or in defensive positions. Mm -hmm. And he has to understand the situations sometimes, but it's part of the game, part of the age. But now, like you said, can play in the both wingers, behind the striker as a striker, because high dynamic, his aggressivity to attack the ball is incredible. And, and that's why as a manager, as a team, has the player like this and can play in several positions is, is fundamental. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, okay, we'll take some questions in French from the, the French journalists on the call here. We'll start with uh, Jean Saint Marc. Good afternoon, Pep. Uh, will Benjamin Mendy have the opportunity to play against his former club? And overall, what progress does he need to, to do? Mendy? Uh, yeah, it's getting better. The last three weeks, one month, he was not injured. He played regularly, played quite well. Uh, still, he didn't get the best, the best level that normally he can he can have. We, that you know in in Marseille and Monaco. But uh, yeah, Lamendi has said many times when he can train regularly, is not uh, being a stop for danger. He can he can give us or he can do what uh, what really he is. Okay, thank you. Um, Fabrice Lamperti. Oui, bonjour. Um, Hi, hello. Hello. Well, um, people have been talking about the derby on Saturday a lot, but what about talking about Marseille for a moment? And, um, and uh, what do you think about its team? And what do you think of André uh, Villas-Boas, the coach? A lot of respect. He has been in a lot of clubs, making crowd success in Oporto, and uh, and after making experience in England, so uh, um, and Marseille, you know, position on the table in the French league it speaks for itself. For the quality is there. Unfortunately, he couldn't get the good results in uh, in the Champions League, especially when he lost in the first game in Olympiacos in the last minute and after lose at home against us. So start with zero points, two games always make difficult, but uh, the quality is there with Payet, with Toban, with uh, with all the strikers, with Benedetto, uh, the physicality up front. So yeah, the French league is is tough. Everybody knows it. Look what happened Lyon, what happened Lille, and of course PSG, and it's there. So yeah, it will be interesting game. Really important, of course, for them, for qualify for the Europa League. But for us, important too, you know, for the club, for the prestigious, for the, for many things, and uh, yeah, for the dynamic to win games and win games. If we can go to Simon Stone, please, when you're ready, Simon. Hi, um, uh, Zach. Um, I don't know whether you're going to play tomorrow. I would have thought you being here is a sign that you are. What is it about? <laughs> American goalkeepers that is so attractive to Premier League clubs? Um, that's a good question, man. I mean, I'm not the one scouting us, so I wouldn't have the, the complete answer. But I would say, I mean, for me, 
I grew up playing different sports, basketball, baseball, football with my friends. So um, the, the athleticism that I had and, and that I've seen in the, 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 the Tim Howards and the Casey Kellers and the Brad Friedels, uh, Brad Guzans, um, the, I, I think we just got that from, from other sports and, and that really helped, at least it definitely helped me um, with goalkeeping. And, and what have you kind of learned from your time at City this season and, and in particular someone like Edison? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot so far. Um, it's, been, it's been busy, but uh, just, just the details, um, how closely they focus on, on, on everything regarding playing, um, shot stopping, playing with your feet, um, just your your positioning the entire game and in, in, in training um so i mean it's it's been a pleasure to be here it's been awesome um i feel like i've i've gotten better um and it's been um it's been a fun time so far mr ben ramson please guys hi zach um i spoke to your opposite number tomorrow night steve mandanda obviously Got a lot of experience, French international at Marseille. And he said his one word of advice to you was just to enjoy playing in the Champions League. Has it always been a dream of yours to play in this competition? Absolutely. I mean, I remember watching this as, as for as long as I can remember. Um, and um, yeah, walking out and, and hearing that uh, the, the, the song is going to be, um, it's going to be really special um, for, for me and my family. Um, but I'm just excited to get out there and, and play another game um, with this club and, and with the guys um, and, and playing at Eddie Head. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that and, and playing against Steve. I mean, I've been watching him for years and, and he, he's definitely uh, been one of my idols as I've, uh, as I've grown up. And it's every goalkeeper's aspiration, of course, to be a number one. How close do you feel you are to taking that role in a team? Yeah, obviously, I, I um, we all want to play games and, and we're competitive. We want to play as many games as we can. Um, and I feel like, like I said, I, I've learned a lot from from the coaching staff and, and from Eddie and, and Scott. And um, I, I'm, I still feel like there's a lot for me to learn, um, but I feel like I, I've improved um, um, in, a, in a decent way since, since I've come here. Um, I, I know that. Uh, the beginning of this year for for the first six seven months was pretty rough with injuries so it's been a while since I've played games and trained and then um, coming to such a high caliber caliber um, club has been in the beginning it was a little it was a little tough and took a little time to to get into my swing of things and comfortable and all that stuff but um, now I feel settled and I feel comfortable and I feel um, feel like my confidence back and um, and I'm, I'm ready ready for tomorrow. James please, guys. Zach, you mentioned Tim Howard, Casey Keller, and Brad Friedel there. Who have been the key influences and, and inspirations for you growing up as a goalkeeper? For me, I mean, I watch all of them, but I mean, Tim Howard, um, I feel like my, my play, my, the way I move and, and mannerisms are, are most similar to him. Um, and um, yeah, when I was growing up, I mean, he was, he was pretty much the, the man. Um, for for my time, so Tim it was my uh, biggest role model. And in terms of tomorrow night's game, Man City already top of the group when it comes to the Champions League. So, what are you hoping to, as a side, get out of tomorrow night's game? Yeah, I think this is uh, this is a good challenge for us. Um, we already know that we're through, but um, can we go out there and be professional and, and get the job done, get a win, and get a shutout at home, um, and, and get uh, um, yeah, um, get as many points as we can for, for the first round and um, continue our, our good play and, and um, gain some more confidence going into the uh, Manchester Derby this weekend. Right, Caldera, please, guys. Hi, Zach. Um, it's, it's interesting the work that you do off the pitch as well with the voice now and, and stimulating athletes to to celebrate diversity as you as you as you say in the in the voice now page um is it is it something that you realize that the new generations of athletes and sportsmen are are, 
are trying to to be together on this as well, to have a voice on this kind of social thing? I do. Um, we have these massive platforms that we work hard for. Um, and usually in the past, I mean, for me, it was just using it for my own personal gain or career. Um, and this year has really opened up my eyes to, to how much good I can do um, off the field for the, the people who, who, who need our help and need a, a helping hand. Um, so yeah, I know, and I have a, a lot of good people around me and, and people that I've, I've come across in my career and in my life that um, share the same um, values and beliefs um, and um, know that what we have is because of such a good support system um, growing up and, and we wouldn't be where we are today without that. So we want to help give back and help, um, help the youth um, have uh, as much successful opportunity that, that um, we have had. Simon for them in please guys. Hi Zach. Um, how do you stay sharp when you're not playing regularly? Have you had to change the way you train or think about your game? I think the, the the goalkeeping staff they do a really good job of of continuing to push um, all the goalkeepers um, on a day to day basis, uh, and they're very detailed and and they're always wanting us to be perfect and 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 get better and and save everything, um, be clean, um, do as much as we can for for the defense in front of us. Um, so there's really no um, you can't really just come into training and, and give it 50%. You're really giving it 100% um, each and every day. And that's that's why we, we we get better. And that's why we're, we're one of the best clubs in the world. Mike Minow. Hi, Zach. Um, working with Edison, what advice has he given you? And, and, and what have you learned perhaps most from him? I imagine... You've probably got a good relationship. The goalkeepers' union's always quite strong. So, what, what sort of things has he been saying to you? Yeah, no, I mean he's just a, a great guy, and and he's always laughing, is is always um, joking around, but is serious as well. Um, I think just the camaraderie that he and, and Scott um, ha, have created, um, and then the the Javi and and, and Rich, um, just their kind of little goalkeeper community that they've created is really awesome. Um, it's very intense. It's very detailed. It's very focused, but at the same time, there, there's laughter. There's, there's, um, there's making sure that you're happy and, and that off the field is happy and then everything's, um, everything's okay. And then um, it's been a pleasure to be a part of that. Paul Hester, guys. Hi, Zach. Um, Raheem, does is, has been quite a uh, vocal on the anti-racism uh, campaign. Um, I was just wondering, have, have you kind of spoken to him about kind of linking up with your foundation and kind of try to do something together um, generally? Not yet. Um, so for my foundation, we're we're really just laying down the groundwork and, and getting all the paperwork and all that stuff um, in order. Um, so come 2021, we're really going to hit the ground running. Um, and, and we have, we have a lot of plans coming. Um, so I, we, I just wanted to make sure that we had everything, all the groundwork laid. Um, and then, um, I, I would love to, to, yeah, connect with, with Raheem and, and, um, see what we can do together and, and see if we can help each other out. Cool. And at the weekend, we had, a, the disappointing scenes at Millwall where, um, the players were taking a knee and, and were booed at that time. How, how disappointing is it for you to see something like that? Yeah, it's very disappointing. Um, but it's, 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 it's also um, opens up your eyes again because it, it's not, it's not, obviously not everybody fully understands the situation. Um, and that's, that's okay. We're going to, we can't get to, we can't, teach everybody but we can at least um talk to people we can have these discussions and, and try and and show them um this is why we're, why we're fighting why we're why we're taking a knee um why we're trying to give back to to the disadvantaged communities um that have been oppressed 
Um, and, and that's all you can do is trying to educate those, those people in this world that just haven't been, um, haven't experienced th these type of things that, that many people have experienced and, and the reasons for why we're fighting. Martin Butler? Yeah, hi Zach. Just on, just on the same subject, how many sort of sportsmen have, have been in touch with you since you sort of, you know, started this this foundation? Yeah, a lot. I mean, we have a community of about 100 athletes that that are all um, really bought into to going forward with us and and, and um, want to help give back to the communities around them, whether if it's the community that they're they're playing in or or from where they grew up in. Um, we have a we have a great group so far, and then we only want to continue to grow that group. And and um, yeah, that's the goal. Is that is that mainly in America or is all over the world or? Um, I mean, most of my connects are American or play in America. Um, so that's where we're definitely focusing on. Uh, but now that I'm over here and overseas and, and I'm meeting more people and, and um, I'm learning the cultures over here, I definitely want to um, get it to where it's kind of worldwide. Thanks. Excuse me. Thanks, Alex. Good in, bro. Hi, uh, Zach, as a sort of follow-up to that, really, uh, how... Is it, is it a frustration at all that, that you've obviously got so much to say and, and so, so much, you know, that you want to sort of push as an agenda um, and yet you sort of denied the profile as a sort of second keeper at the moment? Uh, what do you mean? Sorry. Well, you, you're clearly passionate about, about what you were just talking to Martin and, and Paul about. Um, but as second keeper, you get few platforms to, to actually express those views. Yeah, uh, I mean, for sure. Um, but at the same time, I got to take my opportunities um, when I get them, like the like the Carabao Cup games and, and tomorrow's game. Um, and just meeting people around here, um, creating a good bond with my teammates and, and, um, and just sharing um, my values and my goals and, and where, I, where I'm coming from. Um, and, and in turn, that's, um, that process will, will yield some good benefits and in, in, um, in the end and, and I just got to keep going I mean it's a it's a process of, of success is a process um, and, and being a goalkeeper is definitely a process as well because um, there can only be one out there um, at a time. Okay, we'll take any questions that we've got in French. I've got one from Fabrice Lamperti. Fabrice can you hear me? Oui bonjour Zach. Hi Zach. Hi, Zach, can you hear me, please? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, excellent. Hi, Zach. No, uh, you spoke about uh, Mandando a little bit earlier at the beginning of the press conference. And um, can you tell us why you admire him? You know, what sort of like, what are his qualities? Um, you know, what are his, his abilities that you, you really um, admire? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, just his his poise in the game um, and obviously his shot stopping and, and athleticism and um, his experience is, is, <clears throat> is obviously a big part of his game now. Um, and I just remember um, as I was growing up, I, I would look at these goalkeepers across, across, the, uh, across the pond. Um, and, and Steve was definitely one of them. And he was just fun to watch. And, and he kept his team in games um, and, and made the big plays um, when called upon. And that's, that's really most important. Thank you, guys. Any more questions? Brilliant. Thank you, Zach. Cool. Thanks, guys.